horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When your mom packs a specially delicious lunchbox for school, doesn't it make you feel all happy and kind of proud? The kids you eat with want a bite, or maybe even ask if you'll swap lunches. Well, that probably happens to you all the time if your mom bakes Betty Crocker cake mix cakes. Mmm, a great big wedge of, say, Betty Crocker honey spice cake sure turns a school lunch into a feast. And I hope your mom knows how easy it is to bake one up. All the good-tasting spices and sweet golden honey and everything are right in the mix. She just has to add water and two fresh eggs for a perfect cake every time. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. So next time you're asked what you'd like in your lunchbox, tell Mom some Betty Crocker honey spice cake. Maybe she'll even let you take the whole cake to share at school. A say-let's-be-buddies kind of cake. A perfect Betty Crocker honey spice cake. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Sid Chillen, notorious outlaw leader, was playing cards with some of his men in a hideout cabin near Eagle Pass. There's someone stopping outside. Must be Blackie and Trigger coming back from town. Sounded like only one horse to me, Sid. Trigger, where's Blackie? Didn't he come back with you? That's what I came to tell you, Sid. Blackie's in jail, huh? Jail? Hey, how did that happen? A fellow from Laredo recognized the roan Blackie was riding as one of the horses the gang rustled two months ago. My thunder if the sheriff gets Blackie to talk. I don't think he'll squeal on the gang. He will if they keep at him long enough. What's more, he's the man I was sending across the border tomorrow to meet Carlos Camargo, the Mexican oh, bandit. That's right. I didn't hear anything about that. What's it all about? Yeah, you weren't here when I told the gang. Camargo has contacts for selling stolen cattle and horses in Mexico. He got word to me he'd like to join the gang. Said to send someone to meet him at the La Rosa Cafe in Piedras Negras just across the Rio Grande. We'll ride into Eagle Pass and get Blackie out of jail. Oh, that's risky. Not if Blackie hasn't talked. If the sheriff doesn't know he's a member of this gang, he won't be expecting trouble. Right, we had to bust him out of jail before up in Pekin. Yeah, I know. But he won't have a chance to be careless again. After we get him out of the jail at Eagle Pass, I plan to get rid of him by putting a bullet in his back. That night at the jail, the sheriff walked from the cell block into his office. Hey, any luck, Sheriff? No, oh, that fellow's mighty stubborn, refuses to talk. I reckon he'll break down if we keep him locked up long enough. Great, tell me you do. Hey, my man and I have you covered. Holy smoke. Man, Take your guns, Lefty. Yeah, By thunder, you won't get away with this. <laughs> we are getting away with it. Now, Sheriff, you and the deputy walk ahead of us to the cells. Get going. A short time later, the outlaw gang rolled in the moonlight along the trail to the hideout. Blackie, why didn't you change the brand on that roan like I told you to? I, I forgot, Sid. Yeah? Well, nobody riding with my gang has the right to forget important things like that. This is the second time we had to take risks to get you out of jail. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
I, I'm sure sorry, Sid. It won't happen again. That's right, it won't. The rest of you right on ahead. I got something private I want to say to Black. Right. Right. Come on, get get up. Up. Oh, what the hell? Oh, oh, oh. Why are we stopping, Sid? What do you want to talk about? Did you talk to the sheriff while you were in jail, Blackie? Oh, no, Sid. He, he tried to get me to talk, but I didn't say anything. That, that, that's the truth. Good. Right ahead and join the gang. I'm going back to that turn and make sure we aren't being followed. All right, Sid. Get up there. This will be the end of Blackie. Get up. Come on in. done for all right. Got him in the back at close range. Well, he won't be needing that roan anymore. Come on. Here, come on. About five minutes later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail from the direction of town. Look, Kimasabi. Someone lying on trail. Yes, we'll see if we can help him. Oh, oh, he's 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 Shot in the back. Him dead? No, he's unconscious, Tonto. We'll apply first aid, then take him to our camp until we can get him to a doctor. Let's get busy. Uh-huh. Later, at the Lone Ranger's camp, Blackie opened his eyes to see the masked man and Tonto bending over him. Mask, hombre. Never mind the mask now. We found you on the trail and brought you here to attend your wounds. Oh, it's too late. Huh? I'm done for. Who shot you? Sid Chillin. Uh, we're looking for him and his gang. No, no. He's smart. They'll leave for a new hideout. But where are you? Uh, him, Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? <laughs> I, I heard of you. Listen, Minion Gang, if, if you could... Get evidence. If we could only find a new hideout. Listen, I... I wish to meet a Mexican. Carlos Camargo at the... La Rosa Cafe. Across the border tomorrow at... Two o'clock. Someone else will meet him. Take him to... Chill in that... <coughs> easy, fellow, easy. Him, they old task, I know. Maybe... Maybe if you... Follow them... Maybe. <laughs> He's gone, Toto. Oh. We'll bury him and then decide what to do. In the moonlight, the two men dug a grave for Blackie. When they finished, Toto asked, You go to cafe cross border? Call a Mexican feller outlaw leader send? Toto will cross the Adrian Negris tomorrow, but I have a better plan than following him to the hideout. I'll tell you about it on the way. The following day, before noon, Tonto and the Lone Ranger rode toward the Mexican town of Piedras Negras. Uh, what's your plan, Kimasabi? I want to reach that cafe early, Tonto. You will not wear a mask in cafe. No, I'll disguise my features. I hope to find Carlos Camargo waiting there. There are other details of my plan we'll talk over later. Come on, Tonto. Let's come. Two men stopped in a grove of trees outside of town, where the Lone Ranger disguised himself as a cowboy. Then Tonto waited while his friend rode to the La Rosa Cafe. Oh, oh, easy, sitting up. It was about one o'clock when the Lone Ranger entered the cafe. The Lone Ranger slowly approached the bar and spoke to the barkeep. Howdy, mister. Hmm? I'm looking for a certain hombre I'm supposed to meet here. You know Carlos Camargo? I uh, see. Si. Si, senor. Oh. He's the tall hombre at the end of the bar. Oh, thanks. Mister, I'm told you're Carlos Camargo. See. Si. Who are you, senor? Sid sent me to take you to his place. Yes, oh. You have come early, I mean. Yeah, made better time than I expected. Well, I reckon the sooner we get started, the better it'll be. Yeah, I am ready, amigo. Good, let's go. A 
short time later, as the Mexican and the Lone Ranger rode the trail just outside of town. Caramba! That shot come from behind the boulders ahead. We must stop. Ho, 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 ho. We must not be taken, amigo. As soon as we face those who shoot at us, be ready to use your guns. You reach, not move. Me, senor. Then when he comes from the boulders, I go into action. No one shoots faster than Carlos Camargo. You reach, Camargo. Huh? What is this? Busca. Open, eh? Take his gun, Dodo. Uh-huh. Now, Camargo, right into that stand of trees. Go on. Uh, get up there. Come on, to it. Get him up, Scout. Dismount, Camargo. This must be a joke. It's no joke. Easy, city, big fella. Easy, shout, easy, fella. Me time. After Carlos was tied and gagged, the Lone Ranger studied his face, then disguised his own features to match those of the Mexican bandit. When he was satisfied with his handiwork, he spoke to Tonto. Tonto, I'll go back to the cafe now. You wait here. When you see the outlaw and me ride past, follow us with Camargo tied to his horse. Ah, uh, and then what me do? Take him to the sheriff in Eagle Pass. Use the back street to reach the jail. I'll write a note asking the sheriff to hold Camargo and not to let word of his capture get out. After that, you pick up my trail and stay in hiding near the hideout. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties, and do, 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 and okay. Okay. Sure enough, take Midwestern champions, for instance. When Bobby Feller takes the mound... The outfield boys sit on the ground. That Wheaties pitching leaves them there, watching batters fan the air. And when we name our Wheaties crew, Big Ted Klazuski's in there, too. He'll face those hurlers day or night and knock their fastballs out of sight. Bob Feller and Ted Klazuski both know that Wheaties magic. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties And you'll be doo-doo-doo-doo-an okay Okay Now to continue the Lone Ranger returned to the cafe and, posing as Carlos Camargo, waited until a man entered and asked, Hey, Barkey, you're a Mexican fella named Carlos Camargo? I am Camargo, amigo. Yeah. Mighty glad to meet you. My name's Lefty. Sid sent me. But of course, I've been waiting. I am ready to leave with you at once. And that suits me. Come on. Si, senor. The Lone Ranger and Lefty crossed the Rio Grande by a little used route, then finally reached an old farmhouse several miles south of Eagle Pass. Hola, hola, here. Well, Carlos, this is it. Let's go inside. Si. Hey, Sid, it's Lefty with Carlos Camargo. Well... Glad to meet you, Carlos. Oh, you're the great Sid Chillin I hear so much about, huh? Yeah. But you got quite a reputation yourself, Carlos. <laughs> uh, because of something that happened last night, we had to change our hideout. Oh? I heard the Mexican woman who owns this farm puts up gangs once in a while. When I mentioned that you were going to join us, she took us right away. Said she knew you. Oh? Trigger, call Magdalena from the kitchen. Sure. Magdalena, Sid wants you. Si, si, senor, I come. Magdalena, here's Carlos Camargo. You said you knew him. But of course, senor. Buenos dias, Carlos. Buenos dias, Magdalena. It is good to see you again. Never have I forgotten how you cut yourself while helping us out on the farm near Monterey. See, si, but it was nothing. I've forgotten it. Hmm. The smile left the face of the stout, middle-aged Mexican woman as she stared a moment at the Lone Ranger. Then she said, You 
You seem to have forgotten other things, too, Carlos. But no matter. I must get back to the kitchen. Adios. Adios, Magdalena. Ah, she doesn't seem as glad to see you as I expected, Carlos. But she is getting along in years, amigo. Women change with the years. Yeah, I reckon so. Sit down with the men a while. I'll see how dinner's coming along. Hey. Uh, Carlos, uh, Sid tells us you pulled some mighty big jobs across the board. Hey, Magdalena, was there something wrong when you met Carlos just now? There is something strange about him, senor. First, never has he ever called me Magdalena. He always called me Senora Jimenez. And his eyes, senor... They are not black like those of Carlos. Hold on. You think he's someone else? I am confused, senor. He does not seem like the Carlos I knew so well. Yeah. Well, don't say anything. But the more I think of it, the more I am sure he is not Carlos. Just leave him to me, Magdalena. I'll take care of him. That night, after the Lone Ranger and the men had gone to the bunkhouse, Sid sat with Trigger making plans. Trigger, tomorrow the gang will hold up the stage just outside of Eagle Pass near the old bridge. Will Carlos ride with us? Yeah. I have reason to believe he isn't Carlos Camargo. I don't say. Briefly, Sid told Trigger what he had learned from Magdalena. When he finished, Trigger spoke. Then he's someone posing as Carlos. That's what I figure. Now listen, he's to ride with the men. They have orders to watch him close. I'm going to ride to Stoneville Easter here and get on that stage. Yeah, then what? I'll ride in the coach. When the gang stops the stage, I'll plug Carlos during the excitement. We can't take chances, so I'll figure to get him out of the way. Whoever he is, he'll be sorry he tried to put one over on Sid Chiller. <laughs> Later, after the others were sleeping, the Lone Ranger quietly sneaked out of the bunkhouse and started past the house toward the edge of the nearby woods. As he passed under one of the windows, Magdalena called softly. Carlos! Carlos! Is that you, Magdalena? I am upset, senor. At first, I was sure you are not Carlos. But now I am not so sure. Perhaps the light has changed your eyes. Perhaps now that you are older, you call me Magdalena. But I don't understand. No matter. But I cannot have you killed because of what I have told them. Hmm. See, they plan to hold up this stage tomorrow near the old bridge. You are to ride with the men. How do you know this? I heard Senor Sid talking to one of the men. I listened at the door. He will ride in the coach. He plans to shoot you when you ride toward the stage. Gracias for telling me. Do not go with them, senor. Leave here tonight. Do not worry about me, Magdalena. Go from the window now before we are heard. Adios, senor. Adios and gracias. When the Lone Ranger reached the edge of the woods, he gave a signal. Immediately, there came an answering signal. And a moment later, Toto came through the shadows to his friend's side. Are you all right? Yes, Toto. Now listen, Sid Chillen has made certain plans. Here is what I want you to do. Early the next morning, Sid gave his men orders, then left to catch the stage at Stoneville. That afternoon, the gang and the Lone Ranger, still posing as Carlos, waited near the old bridge in a gully for the stage to appear. The stage will be coming soon. Carlos, you're going to ride up front with me, Savvy? Easy, senor Trigger. I think I see the stage coming now. You're right. Yep, there it is. Come on, Carlos. You now lead the gang. All right, let's go. I'm the leader. I'm the leader. Inside the coach, Sid paid little attention to another passenger who sat beside him. As the stage neared the old bridge, Sid leaned out the window expectantly. Then he saw the gang approaching. Sid noticed that the man posing as Carlos was riding in front of the gang with Trigger. Quickly, he reached for his gun when... You don't draw. He's got a gun at your side. Hey, what is this? He take your gun. You want to arrest You reach quick. Driver, you stop stage. Uh, uh, uh. You get a bullet in the 
a few minutes. Maybe. What's that? That sheriff with posse. Them catch gang and catch you. Ranger with the gang saw the sheriff and posse, and suddenly turning silver, the masked man faced the gang with drawn guns. Reach, all of you. Hey, what's the idea? You know why, Trigger. So you found out. Hey, Trigger, the sheriff and the posse are coming fast. Use your guns, men. We got to get away from here. I'll attend to this, hombre. Hold it. Go, my shoulder. between the guns of the Lone Ranger and those of the oncoming posse fought desperately to get out of the trap, but without success. Finally, after several of the posse men and the crooks were wounded, the gang gave up. The Lone Ranger immediately rode to the coach to see about Tonto and Chillin. Oh, oh, easy, silly big fellow. Get out, Chillin. Carlos, huh? But now you don't have an axe. I said get out. Let go of me. I owe you this. <laughs> I found out you weren't, Carlos. Trick me, will you? I'll finish this right now. No, no. Ho, oh, ho, oh, there. Oh, ho, oh. Well, we got him. Looks like you got your end of things under control. Tano, I brought your horse with me. Isn't that good? Uh, this man who sent notes, Sheriff. What? So you're the masked man. I wouldn't know you in that getup. I got Carlos Camargo back in jail. What? He'll be surprised when these men join him. Carlos Camargo in jail? I don't savvy. I'll take time to explain to you some night when you have nothing to do but listen. Sheriff, I'm sure you and your man can handle things here now. You caught this gang red-handed. We'll meet you in town later. Adios. Goodbye. Adios. Right, let's go, Carlos. Easy, easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Come on, send the us. Come. Oh, that hombre tricked us. Yep, he sure did. You see, Sid, he's an hombre who usually wears a mask and has dedicated his life to law and order. He's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.